Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a walkthrough tutorial on how to set up the Synology CloudStation ShareSync. So in the previous Synology video, I had just walked through how to set up the Synology CloudStation server and also the CloudStation drive on your local machine. I guess you could look at it as ShareSync is kind of the third piece of that puzzle. Uh, if you have a second or third Synology or more uh, Synology devices. In the most basic basic forms, uh, ShareSync is essentially the CloudStation drive, but designed for a Synology device instead of a for a you know Windows or Mac or Linux machine. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump to the tutorial. It should be a fairly quick video because we've already gone through the tutorial on how to set up a CloudStation server. So we're just going to be setting up the ShareSync part of this uh, operation. So to start things off, go ahead and navigate to your package center and go ahead and click on backup. Inside backup, you'll see CloudStation ShareSync. Go ahead and click the install button right here. Uh, I already have it installed, that's why mine says open. I just wanted to expedite this video a little, but if you click on the install button, it'll then proceed to download and then install. After it has finished installing, you'll get a not notification, and then after clicking on your main menu, you can see it in the listing. Uh, now, at this point in time, the application will load and it'll look quite normal to what the CloudStation drive setup looks like. It's going to be asking for your Quick Connect ID, your username, and your password, and the option to enable SSL data transmission encryption. I highly recommend doing that, and then just go ahead and fill out the same data that you did when you set up the CloudStation drive. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick, and then I'll join right back up. So after entering your Quick Connect ID, your username and password, and clicking Next, it'll go ahead and test the connection, and after that has completed, then you'll be brought to this screen. Here's a listing of all of the shared folders on your remote uh, Synology device that you're connecting to and you're wanting to synchronize with with your shared uh, sync connection. I'm going to go ahead and choose the Archive folder, and you can see here that it's uh, my local folder is the Archive folder. It's going ahead and made one or found one that's named the same thing. Since I already have an archive folder on my local machine, it's gonna use that one. And on this one, if I would choose it with the default settings, it would create a shared drive uh, called CloudSync. But you can go ahead and choose this folder icon to go over and manually overwrite the automation that they choose and choose a certain folder that you already have created. Since I have one called archive and it's automatically, automatically gonna put it in archive, then I don't need to change anything right there. You also have advanced settings. Here you can actually choose which subfolders that you want to synchronize. Uh, I just want to synchronize a certain number. I don't want to synchronize all the backups. Uh, I just want to synchronize the uh, media group um, backups. So here's my backup folder for uh, Top of Broken Tech. It has all the Top of Broken Tech videos that I've kind of uploaded and finished, but I go ahead and keep them in case I want to reuse some footage in the future. So I have a um, archive folder for about, I don't know, about the first nine, ten months, I don't know, it's been about ten months since I've been making YouTube videos uh, of archive footage, and on, uh, in the future I can create a new one called 2018 and go ahead and uncheck this one and only synchronize the newest one so that my local machine only has to store a portion of the data and the rest of it is stored on my remote Synology which has much bigger drives and a lot more storage space. So I'm just going to go ahead and synchronize just my media group archive for this current year. I went ahead and made it 16 slash 17 because I started in late 16 making videos. Uh, so I didn't want to have like one little archive just by itself. So I went ahead and made 16 17 because I just recently made the archive uh, about a couple months ago and I just wanted to throw everything in there that I had done prior to that point. So I've went through the uh, folder filter. You can also use the file filter once, once again just like uh, you can on the local cloud station drive and you also have options to um, have your direction if you want to only upload data or if you want to do only want to download data so this could be useful if i only want to upload data to the cloud station server because since this is an archive folder i don't need to download all that old stuff i just want to upload the new stuff that I move from my live folder to my archive folder. So that's a great option for me. You can also do the vice versa where you only download and you also have two-way sync. So with the share sync, you have a lot more options than you do with the cloud station drive where you only have two-way sync, which means it comes from the cloud or Synology 
down to your local computer and then from your local computer back up to the Synology and you have down uh, download which means it comes from your Synology to your local machine but not back up from your local machine to your Synology. In the Cloud Station ShareSync you have all, all three different variations where you can go both ways or you can go from one Synology to the other one or from that Synology back to you. So you have a lot more options in there. So I only want to upload the new data I'm throwing in archive. I don't want to download all that old archive data. So it's once again, I'm running on a, just a two drive system. So I only have one drive of data uh, redundancy, which isn't a big deal because I am synchronizing all that data uh, to the remote client anyways at this point in time. And uh, so it's being backed up, it's being copied and then backed up on that server. And uh, I don't need a ton of storage locally because I am using an archive folder. So once a project is done, it kind of goes to archive. So I don't take a lot of space on my local machine or my local Synology at the same time. You can also enable advanced consistency check. It does take a little more performance to do that. But if you're not using your Synology for a ton of other things, it, it's something I just automatically check uh, by default. So that's pretty much it uh, for setting up that. You'll go ahead and connect and uh, go through the settings and you'll see a check mark here. Since I am only uploading data, there's nothing in that folder right now because I just created it. But if I had added something, it will automatically copy to uh, that remote Synology, but not download the data back to me. So it's a great feature to have so I can upload it and then I can go ahead and uh, once it's been uploaded, delete it locally and keep a limited amount of storage on my local machine. All right, so that's pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you found it informative and hopefully it was helpful in the setup process of the Synology ShareSync application. It does share a lot of uh, similarities to the CloudStation drive that you would install on a desktop or laptop, but it is unique enough and has a couple extra features that I felt this video had enough difference that it would be useful to somebody out there. So if it was useful and you did find it uh, beneficial to your setup process, give it a big like. I greatly appreciate that. And also, if you're not already an existing subscriber, hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you be you can be notified as I release new videos on top of Vulcan Tech. Also, check out the links in the description below and also on the banner that rotates throughout this video uh, for different ways to communicate with me or also to support Thought Provoking Tech. Thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, Zach out.